world to the spot scientists consider ground zero for measuring the effects of climate change. Here's a sobering thought. The concentration of carbon dioxide in our air is now 35 percent higher than it was before the Industrial Revolution. And you can really see and feel the effects of that in the Arctic. Daniel Seberg is just back from his extraordinary trip there. And Daniel, you were able to get on one of a handful of icebreakers that are able to maneuver that far north. Can you retrace your journey sure, for us? Sure, it's not an easy part of the planet to get to, Katie. We started in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and made our way about 3,000 miles northward across the Arctic Circle uh, through ocean and ice, uh, right up through the land of the midnight sun to resolute Nunavut. Now this took about 15 days with some stops along the way as the scientists took their samples. And you mentioned the scientists, there were about two dozen on board I understand with all sorts of areas of expertise. What brought them here? Well it's all part of an international push to understand what's happening to our changing climate. And you know in the Arctic the changes are dramatic and rapid. In fact since the 1980s scientists have seen warming waters in the Arctic and even an increase of a fraction of a degree has repercussions for all ocean life, including the food we eat. There you go, billions of years old, that ice. Studying the Arctic is like taking the pole of our planet. These are icebergs. But to check for irregularities, where do you place your fingers? Down to 210, please. Okay, burn it out. Scientists here are looking within the ocean to see how changes in temperature are affecting something we all depend on the food chain. Even the tiniest of microorganisms is part of a larger food web. To better examine how the ocean's organisms are connected, scientists deploy a device called the rosette. This is the heart of the operation. Worth nearly three quarters of a million dollars, it's the most important piece of equipment on board. Collecting water from depths close to 10,000 feet to provide a snapshot of the Arctic Ocean from surface to seabed. The biology of the system is, is, is intricately intertwined and to, to look at just one piece of that is, is really just kind of walking around with blinders on. You're just looking at one thing at a time, but really to understand the whole thing, you have, to, you have to look at it all. A melting iceberg may be an obvious barometer of our warming planet, but scientists are also interested in how this fresh water is mixing with the ocean and altering the delicate marine ecosystems beneath. Saltwater ecosystems are more fragile than their freshwater counterparts. When freshwater from an iceberg mixes with the ocean saltwater, it means what lives there may not survive. This starts with phytoplankton and works its way through the food chain, from the larger zooplankton to fish we eat to seabirds and so on. What happens to phytoplankton is also important since they absorb some of the carbon dioxide humans release and convert it to something crucial. Half of the oxygen you're breathing right now is coming from these guys. Sea animals like starfish, seen here 500 feet down, also depend on phytoplankton for food. Some ocean life is scooped up from the bottom to see how warmer temperatures here could affect where they're able to live. So okay. even at the level that the creatures live in the seabed, they could be affected by climate change that's happening yep. on the surface. Because they're dependent on food from the surface. At the top of the Arctic food chain are polar bears, like this mother and cub who've just eaten a seal. There he is. There he is. Polar bears hunt on the ice, and as it's reduced, their chance to find food diminishes. Less ice also means the polar bears spend more time in the water, sometimes for so long they drown. Thanks to expeditions like this one, our climate change picture is slowly coming into focus. The question is, can we adapt? We're sitting at about 218. Roger, thank you. To what they discover. Those pictures really are breathtaking, but it really does have an impact, at least on some of the food we're eating here. Certainly, the effects can, can trickle all the way down. Tell me about tomorrow's piece. Well, tomorrow we're going to introduce people to a scientist who's been going up to the Arctic for about 40 years and uses a pretty cool experiment putting messages in bottles to illustrate how the Arctic Ocean is tied to the Pacific and the Atlantic and how climate changes there can affect weather where we live. All right. Sounds great. Daniel, thank you so much.